enough the other day to visit the home of young artist Jacob Trude who lives on the glorious Somerset levels. Now Jacob takes his inspiration from bees and beekeepers and when he's working with beeswax and honey he has plenty of help to source the raw materials for both his father and his grandfather are beekeepers. Um, you may have read all about Jacob in the October issue of Beecraft so it's a really interesting article. Anyway, when I went along to meet him, he was showing his grandfather, Neil, how he set about making a honey hourglass. I got this one and drilled a hole through the top here. So you can actually see now that there's slightly bubbly concoction on the top. Yes. You see that it's not yeah. as clear as the rest of the glass. Yes. So I've drilled the hole through the top of here. Luckily it went through without completely breaking the whole thing and then riskily use the vacuum cleaner to suck all the sand out because all the sand had ended up in this end, not in the end that I'd made the hole. So instead of sitting there with this, like this over a cup for the whole hour that it's meant to take, I thought a vacuum cleaner, suck all the sand out, so it was a bit like, put it on, quickly pull it away so I don't build up any vacuum in there and end up with the whole thing exploding. And then once it was completely empty, I spent a few days, I put um, water in there and some white vinegar just to get the residue of the sand off. So it was actually stuck to the sides and I couldn't get it back out. So I was there just like swirling different things around it to try and get it out. And eventually I gave up because it wasn't just not clear in it whatsoever and I thought if the honey goes in there it will probably knock it off the edges so you won't even know it's in there and then with a syringe I got a, a jar of honey and I just started to syringe it in dad's there like don't go using a whole jar of honey for this so I'm there with half a jar and it looked like it had filled to about here and so it looked like it had absolutely no honey in it, so I just keep going till the full jar is in here, like he told me not to do. And then I let it all run straight to the bottom, so that I had no honey in this area. And then I could turn it on its side with a clear area. So all the honey was like this, but in that side. And I got a piece of resin, and I just started to push it in over the side here. The problem was that there was a hole and so I was actually pushing it in so you can also see if you catch the light right that there's a bubble inside bubble just there yes I see that <laughs> so that's where the resin started to go in and I, then I'm there trying to pull it back yeah. out so that I can but it's not too noticeable so it's fine and then I had to just cleanly put it over the top so that it can actually be flipped up both ways so I then ended up with a working hourglass it a slow hourglass that would take several months to go through but a working hourglass. And then I had the idea beforehand that it would represent the bee, bees running out. So if bees die off, the hourglass would run out. So with this, we have a, a piece to show that human interaction can actually help keep bees alive. So a human has to turn this over to keep it going just like the humans need to get involved with bees to keep them alive. I then came up with this plan that I was going to do it. So along the same lines that bees are dying off and it's all about time. So the whole project's just talking about time and how important it is that we get involved with bees. So this piece could be seen as a piece showing global warming and that's effect on bees so it's all about the sun so the sun is needed to show time but it's needed for a lot of things to do with bees as well it can be too hot for bees it can be too cold for bees and it's needed for the flowers as well so the first mold the whole base i used old pieces of clay so I made a circular piece of clay. I got the top of an old flower pot, 
cut that off so I had a circular piece that was about this deep and then I put the clay in the bottom and marked off all of these angles so I've got lines coming out from the middle to represent the time. Then I poured the wax in on top of that. The whole thing split in half because I cooled it too quickly. So I had to then go back again, refill it, heat it up with the hairdryer. Quite an important piece in the wax process I found. And just get it to the point that it's actually fixed back together and now it's it's substantial enough for me to move it, but splittable if I was very rough with it. And then for the top, I had run out of my clay, so I ended up pushing this into some homemade Play-Doh and to make a bit of a mould, temporary mould, but enough that I could just pour the wax into it and then I had it this thick, poured the wax into it, and I ended up with wax going all over the top of the Play-Doh, so the whole thing completely covered. So I had this shape, but there was none of the gaps, and then I had to go back into it with different pieces. So I got my pyrography pen, so this gets very hot, and I should know I've burnt myself on it a couple of times. So. I then had to work into it, so I came in through like these pieces and just heated it all up so I could just break the wax. So as I heated it, I could then just get like a toothpick or a palette knife and just break out these pieces and clean them up. So without this, I'd have had some quite unclean edges, but I could just go back round and just smooth out the edges. And the whole idea that the wax is actually melting away was helped by this because I could just put it in there and the wax would start to run on its own. So even though I've got these big pieces that look like it's meant to be melting, I could add in actual bits of wax melting as well. I then put it into the beehive, so I could put two brood boxes on top of each other, so I had a nice big cavity and I stuck it inside that with the queen excluder under it just so I didn't get the eggs and all of that inside it because I didn't want that and then I left it in there for a few weeks in the meantime I got stung and had the ambulance out and then they eventually built all the way down here they secured joints so down in here you can see that there's actually some comb being built and they've added a bit into the back and round a little bit on the side there and obviously there's a nice bit that they've put at the top here and so that's actually secured all the joints it's made it a hell of a lot stronger than it was before they've reused wax so they've chewed all around the edge of this and also in the middle and down the sides here and just reused that so pieces mostly be made i've just kind of reshaped certain parts of it and corrected it so if there was pieces of comb that weren't in quite where I wanted them or they were in a place that would get broken so down here I had to remove quite a bit because they'd actually dropped it down through the queen excluder and I didn't want so as I then pulled it up I then had these like straggly bits that hang down so I had to then clean all of that up which when you put heat to it it does melt very quickly it's so thin and it would just almost disappear so I have to be like, go like in and like quickly pull away just to get that smoother edge so that I don't get sharp bits and broken bits. So cleaning it up is horrible to do, but it's necessary to actually make it look a bit neater and just correct what the bees have done, even though they've done a pretty good job already. Hide from your neighbours as much as you please But all that has happened to us you must tell Or else we will give you no honey to sell